It is now time for What's Hot, where we talk about stories that have everybody talking. We are joined today by John Ann Willow from Third Coast Digest at thirdcoastdigest.com, and Jeff Wagner is back. So a father was confused after getting reports about his normally calm autistic son misbehaving at school. And to get to, bo to the bottom of the situation, he wired his son and caught the boy's teacher verbally abusing him. Listen in. Can you have the book? Yeah, no. Did you go to see any books in the library or you just looked at sculptures? So the video also includes a conversation in which one woman tells another she's hungover. The aide has been fired, but the teacher remains employed in a different classroom. What do you think about this father's method of wiring up his son to get the information? I love it. I am so glad that he did that. I, uh, I love most of the teachers that I've ever come across um, that have taught all five of my children, and they are, for the most part, very hardworking, extremely dedicated people. But every once in a while, to have a good teacher, you have to give them some autonomy, and not everybody can handle it. So I am, I'm really proud of him when he sensed a problem and he wasn't getting the cooperation he needed from the school district, that he took those matters into his own hands. And well, I think, you know, if you have a gut instinct as a parent, you need to go with it. Yep. Well, see, this reminds me, remember a couple years ago, there was a story in Milwaukee where there was a bus driver who was beating, I think it was the autistic child as well, and the parents couldn't figure out what was going on. You know, where was the kid, you know, getting this behavior from? They put the uh, recorder in the backpack, and then they're able to determine what's going on. I, I have no problem with this at all. I mean, look, the, the, the bottom line is, you know, these parents were trying to do the right thing by their child, and it's embarrassing. It, it might even be, you know, some criminal behavior on the part of some of these teachers, but, you know, too bad. That's the truth. It is the truth, and again, kudos to the dad, and I wish it didn't have to be the case, but especially with autistic kids, and kids in that classroom, they were not capable of speaking up for themselves, and, and that's probably sort of what made the teachers feel like they had the license to do that. I am really disappointed that that teacher was just reassigned to another well, classroom, though yeah, that's that, appalling. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, John, and that, that's my big question, is it, you know, once they verify that this occurred, and I don't think anybody's disputing that it did occur like it's depicted on the tape, what is that person still doing in class? classrooms. I mean, my goodness, what do you got to do to lose your job if this doesn't qualify for it? Absolutely. I mean, when a police officer is confirmed to have ab abused a person who's being arrested, they're at least put on desk duty. <laughs> you know, I mean, and that's, right. and police brutality is a big issue, but a teacher brutalizes a child and they're just assigned to a different bunch of kids. It's just wrong. Okay, let's keep a little time left in the bank here because our third topic Sorry. is one we're going to want to talk about for a while. <laughs> Sorry about that. Stay well, coming tuned. up next, first cousins are allowed to marry in Wisconsin. Should that be legal? I just and Jeff Wagner from News Radio 620 WTMJ. Did you know this? First cousins allowed to marry in Wisconsin. They can't have children. The women must be 55 or older, or one person must be sterile. Should first cousins? Be allowed to marry in Wisconsin. Here's the problem. It's like, okay, you can marry, but, and then there's this whole list of things you can't do. That to me means. Not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was saying earlier, I can't get past the ooh factor yeah. on that one. Mm -hmm. It's kind of gross. Yeah. But I really do wonder, like, when that law came into being, like, what kind of weird blue law that is, too. We have blue laws that we still observe uh, with vigor, like in the North, where you can take your child, no matter how young, into a bar and have them have alcohol. Doesn't necessarily make it a good idea. This might not be a good idea either. Yeah, I mean, this is one of those deals where whenever there's a really good chance that your family tree might end up looking like, like a wreath, you probably don't <laughs> want to get involved. And, and this is one of those is things. Is that a Wagner's yeah. rule? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want your family tree looking like a wreath. Absolutely. And how do they enforce that anyway? What if a child is born? Then is the child, I mean, then do they go to jail? Like, what do you, how do you enforce the, the, the rule? All right, yeah, well, right. I, I'm back with your basic premise, though, John. The, 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 the Yeah, the, <laughs> this, is, this is kind of the ick factor, you know, and it's like, even, like, th then there's the first cousins, and then, you know, there's the second cousins, and that's illegal in Wisconsin as well, thank goodness. I mean, because that's kind of like, okay, you know, uh, this, yeah. Second cousins <laughs> is legal, and first cousins is... No, wait, second cousins is illegal, first cousins are legal? First cousins is legal, but only if they're over the age of 55. Right. Yeah, so after okay. the childbearing age. Yeah, yeah. Okay. accidents that's happen. A, <laughs> it, it, that's a long-seated family issue there. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, yeah, if you're waiting until yeah. you're 55 <laughs> to marry your cousin. Yeah. All right, let's talk about this right here. A foul ball tossed into the stands at Texas Stadium after the ball bounced around a little. Some adults came up with the ball, reducing a small child to tears. 
then completely either oblivious, unaware, well, we don't know what, the couple poses with the ball right next to the crying child. Now they're being blasted, being called self-absorbed, even the worst people ever. Is this level of backlash appropriate? No, I mean, now look, I, I, no, I, I would look. I, I would have given if I ever catch a ball, I'm going to give it to probably some kid. Maybe not necessarily the three-year-old. Maybe somebody who's a little older that might appreciate it. I think that this couple was oblivious. I mean, it's not like they pushed the kid over to get the ball. It's not like they stole the ball out of the kid's mitt. Um, th they are kind of oblivious. I think they're they're doing the silly celebration thing that we see all too often when people go to baseball games, where you know they want to be the focus of attention. But I don't think they're the worst people in the world. Uh, you don't have kids. <laughs> no, I, you know, the thing is, is he's probably three years old, I would guess, from the picture. I, I guess yeah, I don't three. know, but, and he probably won't remember this, but it was a, it was a, it, it could have been, they could have given it to the kid. It I wouldn't would have hurt them. I would not want to be caught on TV doing what they did. I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't want to be caught trying to sleep at night um, at making a little child cry when I could have made his whole world rock, but, okay, you know. Well, see, the other thing in, in defense, I'm, Look at him, think, he's reaching for the ball. Right, but yeah. see, I, I think <laughs> they I, I'm knew. also not sure that I'm also not sure that that's necessarily what made the kid cry. That he that he couldn't, you know, he can't get that baseball. I mean, maybe he's just disturbed by the fact that okay, see, he's no, not he's crying. He's, he's not he's crying. Yeah, yeah, you can see. He's got the, yeah. the mids, and then, and he, then wants he turns the back ball. and he's yeah, crying. No, no, no. He wants yeah. the ball. That's and pretty the, clear. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. You know, I mean, I guess there's an argument that Jeff might make that's like, well, you know, kids shouldn't necessarily get everything no. that they want. And, and those adults were faster and stronger and bigger, and they but caught they the ball. So they get to I don't know that they should have necessarily given him the ball, but maybe uh, tone down the celebration, like tuck the ball behind you, wait till later. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, see, and again, in their defense, I'm not sure they realized that the kid was that upset over this. I, I think that they're probably not paying attention to him. They're just all excited about getting the darn foul ball. So. Well, as uh, as the producer just told us, he did end up getting a game ball. Somebody else gave him a ball. Yeah, yeah. The, Rangers, the Rangers came out and gave him a ball, so everybody yeah. goes away happy. The Yankees announcer, the TV announcer, was really ripping on these yeah. people, and eh, I don't know. Well, I don't. You know, if they had pushed half him the out reason of the way, he was I ripping on him, Jeff, is because he was the Yankees announcer, <laughs> right. and they were Rangers <laughs> fans. Fair enough. Yeah, they were Texans. I mean, so there's that against them. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. Good.